السلام علیکم سعیدی وعلیکم السلام ورحمۃ اللہ Uh, thank you Saidi for this explanation on good character. We were always confused how the brothers of Saidna Yusuf threw him in a well and they were all prophets. Thank you. Yeah, you know we get a question all the time from people who also want to argue with us. They were not prophets. They were not prophets. Uh, <laughs> whatever they were, the you lost the subject point. The point was how 11 brothers tried to kill the 12th brother. So even within a family how dangerous jealousy is. But that a lot of these people keep posting, oh they're not, they're not prophets, they are prophets and the 12 tribes of Bani Israel. So but if you doubt that they're prophets but you still lost the point. Why are 11 brothers trying to kill their 12th brother? They're not strangers, they're brothers in one family, one father. And if, if within a family Jealousy can be so dangerous that you want to kill your brother, then God help all those who are not in a family and they're being uh, attacked by people. So that's the danger. Then people collaborate and, and coordinate and they conspire with each other, oh bring that person down and don't send their post and don't let their, their videos to get out and we're going to go into their travel in their areas and we won't be with them. And, Just these are conspiring and premeditated ways to show how much hasad they have and that's the danger and that's the sadness of the nation. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah A few people are asking the same question, Sayyidi how can we protect ourselves from jealousy and hate? Protect yourself? Uh, I don't know, all the other teachings we have with hasad is to not to put things into people's faces. So personal hasad or what we're talking about is, is our teaching and knowledges, there's no way to turn that off and we can't dumb it down just to make other people happy. And you know we can talk about bananas and then that group of people they will never be happy. If I give you one week of just the, the tafsir of bananas it still won't make them happy. Because as soon as we switch into apples they say, why you went into subject of apples? You know this is not going to make any… you can never make anyone happy. And the lesson Sayyidina Isa salam is always teaching is that you learn in life. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. That we do what we do for Allah never for anyone. In the end the potential of everyone coming against you, throwing you out, disregarding you, never even giving you a phone call, that's a 99% likelihood. And you can't take offense to it, you can't be saddened by it although the physicality has a sadness for people you spend your time on and in the end they don't even give a phone call and go their way and curse you. But in the end Allah described they're going to sell you. So our life is about accepting people are going to sell you and perfect the intention of why you did what you do. And we do what we do that Allah be happy with us, Prophet be happy with us and that our grave have a light, that's it. Now if other people are going to like it or not, nothing we can do about that. So you can't make anybody happy. You have to make Allah and His Rasul happy. If you made them happy you have achieved the greatest achievement that, that mankind can achieve. And as far as hasad with people I would imagine same, 
that whatever you do that make sure Allah is happy with you, Prophet is happy with you and that governs you in your physical life. That you know don't, don't eat too much fancy things in front of people who don't have, don't do too many fancy things in front of people that don't have, don't always be the, the most outrageous in front of people because Prophet won't be happy when somebody is too extravagant showing in the face of uh, all these difficulties and people's uh, lack or in people who are in need. So all of the same system carries through in everything we do whether it's for dunya or for akhirah. And the rest is out of your hands. So it's not about what we can do but it's to have a certain state of understanding and the rest is in Allah's hands and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And we do what we do for their love not for people. So you can never make people happy, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Mawlana Walaykum As Salaam how do we apply the teaching of don't engage anyone in person? I.e. when we go to our local masjid, should we go in our sunnah regardless of the people's opinion and just get in and out? Yeah, you, 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 you don't have to be a, a too, too, too much of a social person. So you go in your sunnah and uh, you go in and out and say, this is my Turkish uh, cultural clothing and thank you very much, bye and do your salah and, but people have a, a desire to want to make friends and unfortunately everybody in the masjid wants to be a shaykh or imam. So the, as soon as you pray the guy next to you he's imam that your toes are not right. As soon as you sit the, he's the imam next to you saying you're not supposed to use tasbih and then uh, another imam that you're praying wrong uh, because everybody wants to be a chief and nobody wants to be a uh, Indian if that makes sense for people but not the people in India because they won't know what does that mean chief and Indian. But too many bosses and nobody wants to follow. So Allah is in need of servants and uh, the, the jama'ah go in to be a servant and do your prayers, hello, hello and walk out. But if they find the need to want to socialize they're gonna get it now from everybody and everyone's going to teach and it's going to be usually confrontational. Because they're ignorant and then they start to teach you what's uh, not correct, inshaAllah. We went somewhere and they said, oh the, the ring is not allowed in Islam. What are you going to do, take a book of all of our teaching and debate each thing the person saying, I said, are you crazy, what are you talking about the ring is not, uh, it's a complete sunnah. Then when they couldn't do that then they said, oh you're, you're a tasbih, tasbih is not allowed. Prophet didn't have a tasbih, of course they did have a tasbih, they even had a rope with knots on it so that they could count and that you're supposed to recite Surat Al-Ikhlas, 11 Surat Al-Falaq. Why they used to, you're supposed to recite those 11 times? Because when they did magic on Prophet Sayyidina Jibreel came and recited that recite this 11 times to take away their magic. So everything had a count. So they have uh, uh, 33 SubhanAllah, 33 Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar and they had a rope with notes on it like a tasbih and then they designed tasbihs. So why they come up and say these things? Well because Hizb shaitan doesn't want zikr and uh, this, this aqeedah and this belief system is always just to agitate people. They, if they keep it to themselves would have been better then they don't have to do anything and they can just fall behind. But the fact that they want to propagate their misunderstanding and confuse people and make people sick, that's the danger. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, I have no words to say how much this school is unique with such a heavenly teacher that teaches us so many things and most of all the truest Islam. It makes one feel a belongingness to the Muhammadan times. Thank you, Sayyidi. Thank you, Allah bless you and I pray for us inshaAllah. <coughs> as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah <laughs> What is the reality behind alchemy? and the Philosopher's Stone and the rule of equivalent exchange. And alchemy. Please and forgive the my ignorance. 
<laughs> I have no idea. Where did you find that? Uh, are you going through the YouTube? They have uh, any questions there? Yeah, these are YouTube's, Avi. When people ask us, alchemy. They want. They want to make gold from nothing, huh? The be the best alchemy is is not for dunya, right? So that was an analogy that they wanted to turn metal into gold, why? To become rich. Can you imagine taking every piece of metal making it gold then gold will be completely worthless because everything was gold. So that was an analogy of, of, of taking the metal of insignificance to what is valuable to Allah So people are like charcoal. And they end up like charcoal because they're going to burn in the grave. Now how to take the charcoal and to turn them into diamonds. That requires heat and uh, extreme amount of pressure which are imtihan and testing. And that's the reality that Allah gives to the tariqahs is, is hold tight to their hands and Allah enrolled you now into a pressure cooker. So he's going to turn the heat up and he's going to increase the intensity of the pressure of your life so that he could change you from charcoal to diamond. Because anyone who comes to the tariqah, followed this teaching, look and think back three years or four years or two years or five years that when you came what you knew with what you know now. Many people didn't even know there were Islamic months. <laughs> who are the family? Who are the Sahabi? What were the realities of the family? What were the realities of the holy companions? What are the reality of numbers? What's the reality of letters? What are all of these things? They never heard these things before. And then we get an understanding that how much there was a difference. As if you were in kindergarten and immediately Allah shot the student up into above PhD level understandings in which most of these big doctorates and, and uh, places where they have the external alams they don't know any of these realities, nothing. They were to be astonished at that the Muhammad has meme and hamd. They came on video and said, this is amazing, it's amazing, this is a meme and hamd, this is Muhammad, this is the proof that this is the hamd and this… So means they don't spend their life to look at the huruf, the, the inner reality. Everything is always external, external, external. So when Allah enrolls the servant that's where the gratitude is that how much Allah has given by allowing us to enter into the internal knowledges and the fa follow these awliya in which they gave from their heart their realities. And they all have been attacked, that's the way. Everywhere they went they were ridiculed, attacked by again external people and jealous people. Jealous of the conferences they had, jealous of the books they wrote, 60-70 books and still people were saying, oh we've never heard this in tariqah, these are not knowledges, this is not… this is 60 books on these subjects, what are you talking about? Because of jealousy. So the danger is that jealousy blinds completely people and they take very horrific actions. That you know if, if they weren't jealous they wouldn't have that. Imagine somebody with good character, humble character. They're very kind, even they meet you and they don't want anything to do with your teachings, they still are kind because they have good character. They have their own understanding, their own way, they give the salaam, they thank you very much, they ask you please pray for us and they go about their life because their khuluq is, is, is good and they guard what they think they know and what they want to understand which alhamdulillah everyone to their own fountain that they're taking from. But the, the one who want to cast something at you and destroy everything and yell at you and destroy and try to plot and plan and conspire against you, 
that's not acceptable in Allah's way but this is you know the, the devil is, is prevalent and, and very strong. So he, he convinces people to do incorrect things, inshaAllah. Oh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Don't we attract people and catch attention if we carry sunnah attire and carry ourselves this way because this attracts jealousy as well? Please forgive me. Sure. If you don't want to wear it, you don't have to wear it. You can wear it at home when you're praying so that nobody will be jealous of you. And if you're in a jama'ah and we have like you know four, five or six, seven people coming together, they wear their sunnah, they do their zikr, they do their, their meditation. If you're by yourself then you want to go to the masjid, you don't have to go in, in the full sunnah. You can wear sunnah clothes because you don't want to again to, to, to compromise everything. You wear your sunnah head cover so your head is covered, that's the sunnah that Ahlul Sunnah has to keep. And you have your beard, you have your sunnah clothes, you don't have to put the whole turban and you don't have to wrap it with the cone. You can put just the turban on your head and down with the three wraps and the tail, similar to other groups. Again everyone has their own struggle, they have to determine. But you don't have to ask me the question to convince yourself not to do it. If you're looking for me to tell you you don't have to follow the sunnah it's not going to happen. And if you're looking for me to tell you that you're not supposed to fight, it's not going to happen. You have to fight against yourself. But it's going to determine what do you want to fight about. Is it going to be everything at one time? No. And it's not fighting people but fighting the self. So everything is slowly, slowly. So, oh, I'm going to now start to grow my beard out. Yes, congratulations, this is a sunnah, you don't want to die without it because you keep saying, I'll do it later, I'll do it later, I'll do it later, tomorrow you're dead. You're going to be clean shaven with the dead in the grave and that's not the way you want to meet Allah So you have to make then a determination every step of the way. Say, now I got that over, I'm done and strong with that, I'm going to now try to keep my head cover, I'm going to keep my sunnah clothing when I go for jummah, I'm going to do this and this. So everyone has a struggle and a pace in which they have to go and they know their ability. But to say, no can I just like cancel it all and go sit on the sidelines with shaitan and say, no this, you're out of the game at that time, you have to come back into the game and that's the whole struggle inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa When people ask us, you are Sufi, what's the wisest way to respond to them? The, um, if you're Sufi say, I'm in the people of tafakkur, yes. Do you mean the people who contemplate? Yes. I'm a Muslim, yes. I'm a Sunni, yes. And I'm in the way of uh, contemplation and tafakkur and the school of manners. Because again they may be saying Sufi as like something from a, a wild video. Because again a lot of those Wahhabis they, they found like uh, people who had lost their minds on the street and have like 50 rings on their hands and, the, and they have beards with like food in it. And they would take that video and send it to everybody and say, this is Sufi. And then they would scare people thinking the Sufi people are like uh, people who lost their mind. But that's not the truth and that's not the, the reality. So again in your heart is that something derogatory the person's asking and your heart would understand. So then you give a more detailed question that, yeah I'm Sufi, I'm the way of meditation, the way of contemplation and self-purification and I'm a Sunni Muslim and because Sufism is your, your, your way of taste. So it's… you entered into Islam that your belief system is based on the Sunni belief system. And that the way of taste that you're following to perfect your manners is Naqshbandiya which is a Sufi way. So some people may need a little bit more description than just saying, I'm Sufi because they may have been introduced to Sufism as something really out there. Which is very popular they do that, Al Jazeera is known for making these videos to the Arab world. But they would show the Sufis with long hairs and screaming and yelling and, and doing all sorts of bizarre acts. 
And so as soon as you said Sufis, oh you're those guys? I said, no, that's just you know a deliberate ploy to come against the realities of tariqah, which they were firm on Islam. So you had to what? Enter into Islam. Then you had to have uh, an aqidah that what are you following? I said that we are of the Sunni belief systems and then which is your madhab? We are from Imam Shafi and Mawlana Shaykh from Imam Hanafi. So this is the rules that govern you, you look to those books, Riyadh Salihin is for Shafi madhab and what would govern you. And as a result what tariqah taught you akhlaq and character to make you to be sweet, Nashbandiyat al -Aliyya. And that was 50 years ago everywhere. Everyone had a turuq to make them sweet. They studied and they gave all the disciplines they studied and they followed such and such tariqahs for their perfection and their akhlaq. But now it's just a name with no reality or before it was a reality with no name. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. What to do if I cannot bring myself to meditate? I don't know. <laughs> there are ways based on meditation. <laughs> if, if, if you don't like to meditate then you don't meditate. But a, a bulk of this understanding will make absolutely no sense to you because it's, it's not from the physical realm. Until you connect with your heart and connect with the energy and feel the connection, at that time the knowledges are just the tip of the iceberg because the heart begins to feel it, the energy begins to be felt. So every talk has an energy associated with it. If you find just the talks are interesting then alhamdulillah until Allah opens something but uh, we encourage people to sit and at least take an accounting of themselves at night otherwise how do you know that you did a better day than the day before? So right before you're going to sleep just sit with a little pen and paper and say, who are the people, places and things you don't like? What did you do wrong for that day? And everything based on you not other people. This bother bothered me, this one bothers me, no, no that's now the nafs type of thing. But what did I do wrong and I was the, the error in it. I could have said this differently, I could have reacted differently. So once we take an accounting every night that doesn't have to be a meditation, that's just something to write. And then write down the things that we have to correct ourselves. Don't hurt people, don't speak bad, don't, don't yell, don't do this, don't do that, be more generous and, and these good things. Then the next day I'm going to take that and carry that forward on my balance sheet and I'm going to try to do those things the next day. So at least you start with the accounting and as you improve your character meditation should become a little bit easier. Some people don't really want to face themselves, they know what's going to be found there. So that's the problem. So until you can fix it up and clean it up then you'll meditate. But also people whom having horrific amounts of visual stimulation and in inappropriate visual sort of things that they're seeing, how can they meditate? As soon as they close their eyes all the horrific things they were looking at is now actively in their mind and they can't leave it. So that's why then the eyes have to be cleaned, you have to wash them and in the shower you have to visualize that everything is washing from these bad images and you try to keep the eyes and the vision of the eyes to be clean so that when you close your eyes it's like a clean board in which you can, nothing is reflecting of a dirtiness and then you see yourself at Rosa Sharif in Mecca and, and, and the Medina to Munawwara and, and see yourself in that presence and asking the lights of those holy maqams to be dressing you, blessing you. So it's a whole step by step. When we don't want to close the eyes and don't want to face what we've sort of put into the heart then we have to slowly begin to clean it so it's not there and not something scary. 
so that uh, not to make us to run away from closing the eyes, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sayyidi. Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Please forg forgive our ignorance. Please, mm. what is the reality of the rains and green nature rising in Saudi Arabia shown on the internet? Mm. What's the, the nature of what? The rains and green nature rising. Yeah, that, the, the, that uh, they say that in the time of Prophet it was all green and that it would return to that state for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi So these are all the signs, you know, when the weather is, is upside down and, and uh, areas are, are changing and, and uh, floodgates are opening and water is, is all-encompassing and tides are rising, these are all the signs and alamat of, uh, of the days that were promised and that the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi is, is very near and that the, these other people have declared their Messiah. So any time now, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah so should we take our old investments out from cryptocurrency and invest in gold and silver instead? I don't think you have anything left in your cryptocurrency investments. They're down 85 <laughs> percent, so uh, <laughs> I don't know what people have left in that. But we don't give investment uh, <laughs> foresight, it doesn't work that way. But uh, uh, whatever we do in life, you have to have a, a portion of your life with cash so that it's not everything invested. So that cash you have to have some of it at home in a safe, uh, you have to have uh, some gold that has barakah and blessings and you put those coins in a safe and alhamdulillah and the rest is you know well, up to your, your investment acumen and what you believe is, is correct. But uh, no way would we go out and try to give people investment advice and then can you imagine how many people would be angry the next day, you told us the stocks to get this and get that, but that's not tariqah so. We're, he we're here to help people's uh, spiritual life and the preparation for their, for their arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi salam with their good character and good heart. We said before, who will be with Sayyidina Mahdi salam? A pe bunch of angry people who are militant? Why? He doesn't need any weapons. So anyone listening from secret organizations, Sayyidina Mahdi doesn't need any weapons, there's no weaponry involved. He doesn't need belligerent, angry, big people to smack everybody around. He has so much Divinely power that just his du'a and his movement can flip the world upside down, universe upside down but the world definitely. So. He's coming as a fully loaded Ark of the Covenant. Right now the cousins are looking for the Ark of the Covenant, they say they found it. And they're hoping with the Ark of the Covenant that they can have a Divine support. But the true Ark of the Covenant is the Muhammadan heart. That what was given to Sayyidina Musa salam was the imitation until the arrival of Sayyidina Muhammad and the covenant is the contract within the heart that the Muhammadan heart when it arrived onto this earth, the covenant of Allah and the deen and the religion of Allah was now planted onto the earth. As a result of anyone whom has the Muhammadan heart carries the covenant and the ahad of Allah and guarding and holding them is Sayyidina Jibra'il, Sayyidina Mika'il, Sayyidina Israel wa Sayyidina Israfil. And these are the four angels that support the lataifs of their heart. So they are the walking covenant of Allah Not the box and tablets, that was an imitation. So uh, Sayyidina Mahdi comes to open that reality to the hearts of those whom are ashiqeen whom have good character, who have immense love, they are the real who men. That they have hidayat and guidance of Allah 
and Allah dressed them with wow and love, wadud. So real human you listen to them and you'll cry. You look at them you feel like crying because of the sufness and the goodness of their character. Again not aggressive, not angry, not uh, conspiring to destroy people and yeah. So that, that, that character is what makes them to survive all the hardships until they can hear the takbirat of Sayyidina Mahdi So anyone listening from secret groups and organizations they don't need manpower, they don't need a bunch of angry men, they don't need uh, trucks and, and, and people waving weaponry, none of that will even work in his presence. So it's a matter of uh, firmness and good character. The amount of energy they get from his holy heart is enough uh, energy for everything. The, the fire that will come from their eyes just from the Divine lights and Divine blessings. They said when they would go into the presence of the Ark of the Covenant you would have to fast for three days, the Rabbaniyoon. They would fast for three days, make wudu and then enter into the uh, presence of the covenant of Allah If they didn't they would die from the amount of qudra. If you think you had to do that, imagine what Allah is expecting from those whom are going to enter into the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi How they have to be mutahireen, the most purified, most washed, most cleansed within their character that Allah cleans them every night with angels, Allah blesses them and deposits His lights upon their heart and upon their soul. Those then they carry that love and the ishq and the recipients they are the walking covenants of Allah is the Muhammadan seal and the Muhammadan heart. So that's what's in need and this earth is in a condition where it will make that from people. Those people whom are hard and aggressive and angry and uh, everything bad they have to say, the world will soften them because just hardship comes and it'll make you soft. You know it has a way of grinding everything to become softer and softer and softer inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Prior to you Sayyidi I gave up and asked Allah for knowledges and then I found you on YouTube. Shukran Allah Azza wa Jal for sending you. Shukran Ya Sayyidi. Shukran Allah bless you, alhamdulillah. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah, I'm speechless. So many questions I had, I have, they have all been answered in such a beautiful way. Thank you Sayyidi. Thank you, Allah bless you and then bless everybody. Jumu Mubarak to everyone and then the blessed weekend and, and the blessed love of Sayyidatina Fatima Tizari Salaam and that her holy nazar be upon us, our families, our, our communities and that she intercede for us, dress us from these Divinely lights, lights of uh, Holy Qur'an and that she take our case to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and that she make that case to the presence of Prophet that she's happy and has satisfaction with us, our families and our communities inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.